Hi everybody and welcome back. So this is the end of the week now. I haven't had the chance to do any vlogs this week like in between so I'm going to try and do a run through of what I've actually done this week at university. And to be honest I've only been in a few days so there's not really that much I can say but I can just run through what I have done this week. So first off we had our policy and politics lectures and to be honest these do drain, <laughs> they drain me. I hate just listening to policy and politics. Writing it I'm fine, researching it myself fine but when you have to sit there and you're listening and it does drain you a little bit when you have that in lectures. I'm sorry guys don't shoot me for this <laughs> um, but the the girl she did make it as interesting as possible and to be honest I did discover something really really interesting that I didn't know before so some of you may or may not know this I'm gonna tell you anyway but basically does anyone out there know why in different cities there's the poorer side and there's the rich side there's always a defined side and the rich side is always located to the west and every single city you go to, it's always located on the west. But why is that? And I was sat there and I was like, why is that? That's a good point. I didn't know that for a start. I didn't know it was located on the west. But you're right, there is always that sort of divide. And why is that? So she went into that. And actually, the reason is because when industries and farms and things like that are looking to locate or build the plot or whatever they do, whatever they do to set up their business, <laughs> they go by wind direction and things like that. So they always set themselves on the opposite side, so on the east. They always stay away from the west side, so they, they go to the east side, nor a little bit north, a little bit south, like that side of the map, whereas the other side of the map, they don't. These in big industries, farmings, they're always on a certain side, so they're always on the opposite side. So then the rich people, they don't want to be um, near the pollution, they don't want to be near the smell of farms, things like that. They always used to locate, locate to the west and that's sort of what, where the divide started back in the day apparently. I don't know but that's a little bit of information and it blew my mind and I was like oh okay. <laughs> so I thought I'd just throw that random general knowledge fact out there for you that might win you a quiz one day. And then we had our fabulous physiology, which I love physiology sessions as hard as they are. And sometimes I sit there and I want to cry because I don't understand something. I love it. I really, really love it. And we have got the most amazing lecturer right now. Massive shout out to him because he is fantastic. Actually, we've got a couple, not just one, we have got a couple, but this one in particular, th the way he thinks is just amazing. And he told us that, he wanted to go into lecturing because he wants to get to student nurses before they go out there, before they're qualified, before they're let loose on real patients. He wants to come in and teach us how to recognise certain things, how to save a patient's life. And he, he think, he's got that mindset of actually if you get the students, then the future is going to be brighter. And you know what? This is amazing because this is what I always think. Sometimes it is hard to change qualified nurses mindsets if someone's stuck in their ways they've been doing something over and over they don't want to change their mindset is set you're not going to change that opinion no matter how much you show them no matter how much positivity you bring it's sometimes it's really hard to change those mindsets but if you can get them from the start from students fresh meat you're on to a winner this guy is smart and do you know what the way he's teaching us is just perfect and do you know what sometimes we do sit there in a class and we think oh this is so hard and I've said it before you know the in-depth knowledge that they're going to I always think do you know what this is like doctor level I shouldn't really be training to be a doctor as a nurse if that makes sense but do you know what I can see why I can see why because it's going to save somebody's life and that in-depth knowledge that I'm going to have when I qualify and I put it into practice is going to be able to say okay this is what's happening and if I ever come across a doctor that actually is I mean the doctors are they're short-staffed as well the running minimal there's one doctor to how many patients if you've been on a ward if you've been in a different practice area GPs anywhere you'll just see there's one doctor to however many patients and it must be so hard to manage so us as nurses we have to be that at the backup we have to be that person that could potentially save a life so when the doctor comes along they haven't seen that patient for a particular amount of time or they've never seen that patient before but you've been hands-on with them you can say to the doctor okay hang hang on what about this have you thought about this um, what about this medication that they're on that might cause this so you are that backbone I think to a doctor 
that that's just amazing and I think that that's going to save so many lives out there and okay we are nurses and you can say we're not supposed to be doctors but actually we're here to save lives that's why I went into this profession to make a change to save lives and I think it's amazing but this lecturer is just fantastic and the way he thinks and you can see how passionate he is when he's talking and he's explaining things to us and he's saying this is why I want you to know this this is why you need to understand how the body works this is why you need to know that this causes this that could have an effect on this because you're going to be that person that's rationalizing out there on the wards i can put two and two together and save somebody's life he's right he's fantastic and the way he teaches is amazing and i just love it so we had sessions three and four of our copd patient arthur and these sessions were just going in more detail again about the condition why is he further de deteriorating why is his respiratory rating going so high why if you give oxygen therapy is it a bad thing as well as a good thing what is that going to do to the body and learning how to manage an acute exasperation of copd and actually the physiology of if it's not treated how it can become sepsis and how that patient can die and it's about recognizing those signs and symptoms of COPD as well as sepsis because if you look at the signs and symptoms they can be very very similar in COPD and I think this is where people in the past nurses and things in the past have misdiagnosed possibly and if they just realized these little tiny things that actually says sepsis 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 then they could save more lives but basically COPD will cause breathlessness they there will be high levels of co2 in the body there'll be a high heart rate there'll be a low blood pressure probably there's all these signs that actually could be signs of sepsis but then there's recognizing the difference in what is sepsis and what is copd so you have to look at the lactate levels you have to look at okay is this an, an infection is this a widespread infection rather than just copd so you're going to look at the temperature because a massive sign of infection is your temperature is going up because that's the the way that the body controls infection and tries to kill it is by raising the temperature and it's just monitoring okay what is normal for this patient with COPD and okay what is worse for this patient with COPD and the fact that the patient actually knows their condition when someone's got a long-term condition they know what's bad for them what's good for them they know the inside and outs of how they feel with that certain condition so listening to the patient as well and, and then saying to the patient, okay, is this worse than your normal state? And then if they say yes, then you okay. <laughs> because the patient knows if that makes sense. So it is about recognizing those signs, be able to monitor in signs for deterioration, understanding the physiological response in the body, the compensation mechanisms, and knowing what means what when you see an observation like low blood pressure, high blood pressure, and actually trying to connect it all together and come up with a plan for the patient and hopefully saving their life. Sorry, I feel like I've rambled on <laughs> about this for so long. I'm really sorry if I've bored you to death. So other than our lectures, I've actually made a really good start on my assignment. I've got 1,400 words left of my assignment to write. I've wrote 1,600 so far. I've made a really good start on that and I'm doing really well, I think. But this is just the first draft. I've got 101 things that I'm probably gonna change about this assignment before I submit in April, but I have made a really good start. I'm looking to get this done within the next week or two. So at least then that's one thing off my mind. And that is pretty much it. I am working on Saturday. I'm over at our amazing Solly Hall Clinic, which I haven't been to in ages. I'm really looking forward to being there. I'm off Sunday, which is today. You'll be watching this on a Sunday. So I'm off today. I'm probably going to be, hopefully, because I'm not gonna be lazy today. I'm hopefully doing my assignment and researching for, doing more research for my articles. So please, someone leave a comment and kick me up the bum to get me motivated to do this. <laughs> because I tried, to, I have tried to look at my assignment again yesterday. And you know where you just look at something over and over and it's driving you crazy because you've spent so much time researching, so much time writing that you're physically sick of it but I'm motivated and I want to get it done. So I just need that push to get someone to say, start it Claire, do it, finish this assignment. So yeah, give me some encouragement guys. Hopefully I can do it. 
so that is it for this week i shall see you all next sunday so have a great week and i shall see you all next week